with just about what you want, Chance. Anybody else you want besides Joe? No. So infamously a response by John Wayne and his director Howard Hawks to what they perceived as Gary Cooper's unacceptable western High Noon, uh, where Cooper's sheriff basically runs around town begging for help when he runs into trouble. 1959's Rio Bravo is basically the polar opposite, having John Wayne Sheriff basically refuse help from people out of sheer pride and protection of his town folk. Now a certain era of the Western was drawing to an end here, replaced with a West that was more brutal and pessimistic. Um, I mean this certainly wouldn't be the last Western Wayne ever made, uh, but things were about to change as the 60s and Sergio Leone were on their way. Let's take a look. So in a small Texas town known as Rio Bravo, uh, the sheriff, John T. Chance, played by John Wayne, um, has arrested the brother of a local rancher for murder. Uh, the problem is that the villain's brother, Nathan Burdett, is the richest rancher in the area, and he wants his brother set free, at all costs. So can Wayne keep his prisoner long enough for the marshal to arrive and transport him out of town uh, before his enemies close in and bullets start flying? So as the siege grips Rio Bravo, uh, Wayne gradually gains a couple of allies. Uh, first up is his deputy, Dude, played by Dean Martin, um, a drunk who hasn't had a sniff of liquor in two years and is constantly struggling to remain sober. Shotgun you keep under the bar. Pick it up by the barrels. Easy. Thought you were going to ask for a drink. Been a long dry spell. Shotgun first. Set it down. A young gunslinger Colorado, played by Ricky Nelson, who initially resists getting involved, but when his former mentor Pat Wheeler, played by Ward Bond, um, is killed by Nathan's men, he positively insists. And rounding out the gang is old Stumpy, uh, the legendary Walter Brennan, who watches over the jailbird. Stumpy, didn't I tell you to stay out of sight? Well, there you go, I never can preach you. I was just covering in case of trouble. I'd be in a lot more trouble if you'd have got picked off while you were standing at that door. You'd be in trouble? Well, what about me if somebody gunned me down? And as if this little gang don't have enough problems, uh, card shark Feathers, uh, played by Angie Dickinson, arrives in town and catches Wayne's eye. And so we have a Wild West siege movie, um, a battle of wits and wills between the sheriff and his small gang of allies and the evil rancher and his thugs. So Rio Bravo is pretty much a masterpiece of mounting tension, uh, with the sheriff, uh, Stumpy, Dude and Colorado all having to defend an ever-shrinking perimeter around their jailhouse as their enemies circle, uh, seemingly ready to pounce at any instant. And the film has all the usual tropes you'd expect in a classic western. Uh, the dependable sheriff, uh, the saloon dame, the jailhouse under attack, horses, six shooters, etc. But what sets Rio Bravo apart is the complexities of its characters. Um, Wayne has his small band of loyal men and could push for more with the respect he has around town, uh, but seems content to take the burden on. Um, in true Wayne fashion, he seems the least bothered about the impending doom. Game-legged old man and a drunk. That's all you got? That's what I got. If I ever saw a man holding a bull by the tail, you're it. Now, one of my personal favourite aspects of Rio Bravo is Dean Martin as Dude, um, whose battle against the bottle hangs over him throughout the film. Uh, the film, in fact, opens with a brilliant dialogue-free scene of Dude reduced to retrieving coins from a spittoon um, to get yet another drink. And moments between Wayne and Martin throughout the film show a silent respect between them, um, as Wayne Sheriff knows he was once a skilled gunfighter, but years of abuse have dulled his senses. But surely you'll have something left when he's motivated. You're pretty good with that gun when you're sober. Not bad, Mr. Fred. How does that happen? If you mean being good with a gun, I've had a lot of practice. If you mean being sober, I'm getting practice on account of your brother. Now, Rio Bravo is not the shortest film and seemingly drifts along at allegedly 141 minutes. Uh, the majority of the film taken up just hanging out with these characters as they reminisce or plan for some inevitable action. And an odd romance is even thrown in for good measure between Wayne and Angie Dickinson's feathers, who keeps missing the stagecoach out of town now that she's found a man she begins to grow fond of. In case you make up your mind, I left my door open. In a good night's sleep. 
You're not helping me any. Now Dickinson's pretty great in this. It's almost like she's wandered in from some film noir as a femme fatale um, with a no-nonsense attitude and the fact she isn't afraid to speak her mind. Something that disarms the sheriff. I'm glad we tried it a second time. It's better when two people do it. Well, I've kept you long enough. You better run along now and do your job. Now, Wayne in real life was quite apprehensive about the romantic scenes between Chance and Feathers, um, with he being 51 and Angie Dickinson only 26 years old. Now, I do love him in this, but obviously Walter Brennan's there to provide the comic relief as Stumpy, which is fine. He does a good job. Um, and then we've got 18-year-old Ricky Nelson, um, a little bit miscast here, essentially there to connect with a 50s teen audience. And therefore, he looks immaculate throughout and even gets a duet with Martin on the song My Rifle, My Pony and Me. Directed by Hollywood legend Howard Hawks, who'd suffered a bit of a setback after his previous film, Land of the Pharaohs, crashed and burned. Now, Hawks bounced back in style with this film, um, not that he had anything to prove, having already spent 40 years making films like Scarface, His Girl Friday, The Big Sleep and Red River. He refashions a very traditional style western, but with themes of feminism, alcoholism and corruption thrown in. It's a great town western, if that makes sense. Uh, there's very little in the way of huge Arizona vistas, and it's very contained, but still hugely entertaining. Now, having the tension in the film just gradually build up by having us hanging out with these guys and gal isn't always the easiest thing to pull off successfully. Um, Quentin Tarantino, who probably owes his career to this kind of thing, doesn't always manage to achieve it, himself famously being a huge fan of the film. Now, Hawks must have been proud of what he achieved here as he essentially remade it twice uh, with El Dorado in 1966 and again with Rio Lobo in 1970. Eventually, John Carpenter would remake it once more in 1976 as Assault on Precinct 13. Overall, Hawks and Co. created a gripping film about a sheriff and his deputies going up against a greedy yet intelligent cattle rancher uh, with real three-dimensional characters. Obviously, Gary Cooper disliked it, citing it as totally unrealistic. What do you think? And if you've yet to see it, go check it out. I'm getting jumpy. I'll walk along with you and hold your hand. Get back over there where you belong. Yes, Papa. 